No white claw? Of course, you could just do it. Just double fist, but by the light. <laughs> oh, that did it. There we go. That worked. Do you enjoy seeing uh, Broadway musicals? Yeah. Um, I mean, I like it if they don't break into song too often, you know? Elon's on Twitter. He's tweeting about this right now. Yeah, it wasn't until it wasn't until March of 2022 that we uh, we got kicked off. Got a little snack, we got booted. You made me buy the company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, we that's the sound bite we needed right there. That's the sound bite. It's the Babylon Bee at Twitter headquarters. Oh, and Elon Musk is there too. We wanted to give you something actually. Um, <laughs> To restore the liberty of the oh, bee yeah. was yes. very yes. expensive, guys. <laughs> this is a gift. It's a it's an IOU worth forty four billion dollars. Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, well, you know, uh, pretty soon forty four billion won't be worth that much anyway. That's so. that's a good point. <laughs> so I might want to hang on to that one. Yeah, hang on to that one. Okay, that's a big one. <laughs> I, will, I will treasure this gift. <laughs> but it's seriously crazy to us. We come into the Twitter Twitter headquarters. We were, you know, banned from Twitter in March 2022. You, you restored us and a bunch of other accounts in November 2022. And then now we're invited and we get to come here. And we weren't even allowed to go into our account, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like barbarians uh, storming. The barbarians uh, not merely at the gate, they're through the gate and yeah. pillaging the yeah. merch. Yeah. That's what we were doing. <laughs> merch pillaging. <laughs> we're in and we're pillaging the merch. <laughs> you're, the bar you're, you're the barbarian. Yes. <laughs> right. Just making sure. But you're my barbarian friends. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask about that. So the restoring of accounts. Yes. When you came in, so you took over, you closed the deal. There was the lawsuit. There was all that. There was the drama. We were we were like riding a roller coaster, wondering what was actually going to happen because we sure. had no idea if you would ever actually take over the company, if we would ever actually get out of Twitter jail because we had vowed to never delete that tweet. <laughs> right. So we were watching and just kind of wondering what's really happening. Um, then you finally take over. And you go in on day one. What are the conversations? Like, take us behind the scenes. Like, what happened behind the scenes where you're talking with the team, you're trying to figure out what to do with the advertisers and all of that. What was the conversation behind the scene around restoring accounts? There were a few questions around why I was carrying a sink. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where is the sink? Is the sink still here? Um, I think security has it somewhere. Do they really? <laughs> yeah. It's here? Um, yeah. Um, I've still run into people who don't, don't actually... Not, they, they asked me, why did you walk into the lobby with a sink? Because they didn't understand I was yeah. you know, yeah. making a pun, uh, let that sink in. Um, they couldn't help it, you know. I, I felt like if I showed up with a the sink, they'd have to let me in. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't help but let that sink in. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> seems, it also seems like the perfect uh, Halloween uh, you know, costume. Yeah. If you want, presuming you want to get into uh, people's houses. Yeah. That's hysterical. <laughs> so... You came in though, and you said, "Bring back the Babylon B, bring back these accounts." Like, well, and then there was like pushback, right? Didn't you get pushback internally? That's what was reported anyway. Just going off of what was in the news. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was chaos in the beginning. Um, I was trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to run this place and what was going on, um, and it's very difficult when the whole company works from home. So. Uh, you know, it's like, who do you even um, Zoom with, you know? Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, normally you could walk around, introduce yourself to people and have conversations. But Twitter had gone to almost fully work from home. So this, this building was empty. Um, and the Twitter buildings around the world were empty. So it was just very difficult, actually, just trying to understand what was going on. I'd say, it, it, like, the analogy, it would be like being teleported into a plane that's in a nosedive with its engines on fire and the controls don't work. <laughs> and you got to take it out of the nosedive. Yeah. Yeah. You got to connect, reconnect the controls, you know, like who's, what's, what's the org structure, what's the management team. Um, because unlike literally the hour one of the thing closing, I exited the you know, top four people at the company. Mm. Um, and then, uh, then a whole bunch of people also quit. Uh, so it was like, you know, organizational structure was like Swiss, like Swiss cheese that you put in the microwave. Yeah. You know, it was like full of hells and melted. <laughs> How's your uh, Twitter feed? Are you finding it to be better these days or what? Well, I only use the following tab because to me, that's, 
what I always wanted social media to be was just everybody I follow in order, exactly the order that it's posted. So the for you is more, you know, the algorithm driven stuff. Yeah, but I think you should try the for you. Try it out. Yeah. And I, I use it predominantly. And I, I, my time on the app is insane because, of it, because I just, <laughs> there's, it, it's feeding me so much stuff, you know, like the stuff yeah. that I'm watching like crazy fight scenes. <laughs> and, and like, so I get stuck you in You get there. some like weird, get, like no context humans uh, or CCTV yeah. video, TV exactly. video or Exactly. Yes. Uncensored video. I'm getting drawn <laughs> into these things, you know, the CCTV stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's good. I mean, I'm not, I'm seeing a, a mix of opinions too. I'm seeing people that I disagree with pop up that I don't follow, That's good. which a lot of people object to. Right. They don't want to see that. They only want to see people that they, that they agree with. Yeah. Well, well, the system actually does take into account your interactions. So it basically, if somebody, if, if you argue with someone else, it'll assume that you want, you want, you like arguing, right. which probably <laughs> maybe someone secretly does yeah. actually like arguing. They may not want to admit it, but they actually like it. Um, it's like that Monty Python sketch. You know, have you ever seen that one where I'm here I, for an argument? <laughs> yeah, I'm here for an argument. He accidentally goes into the insults room yeah, first. Abuse. <laughs> abuse. <laughs> um, so if if, uh, if 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 uh, if one account argues with another account, the argument will assume that that's what you want. You want you want more more arguments, <laughs> or more of that. You know, because you chose your time to spend your time that way. So. It will actually then show you content that that other content you might want to interact with. Hmm. Um, but I think that over time, the, the recommended for you uh, tweets should be extremely compelling. Um, I suspect um, that you'd probably want eighty twenty uh, recommended versus following hmm. because it, it'll also put it'll it'll the most compelling tweets from your followers are also in for you. Mm -hmm. So. So skip the boring ones that people post much, yeah. and, and go right to the good stuff. I mean, there's some accounts that I follow that tweet you know, 20 times right. a day or more. Um, so it tends to fall off the following. Um, but um, at, you know, you, if you'd want, like, say, the best of the people that you follow, it should be in for you or something's wrong. Um, but um, the, the intent is to maximize uh, unregretted user time. So that's that's uh, that's I think the the, the metric that's the metric I've got the whole organization focused on is um, unregretted user time. I mean, so because I, I mean, I frequently hear someone say, tell me they spent a lot of time on TikTok, but they they kind of hate themselves afterwards. Um, and so that's I'll call that you know obviously regretted user mm -hmm. time. Um, and um, you know, so if if we can, we want it to be that you spent the time on on X slash Twitter, and you're glad you did, like you were informed and entertained. Um, and, I, and I do, I think, get more laughs from Twitter per day than everything else combined, frankly. Yeah, because everybody's moving towards algorithm. Facebook's algorithm, and YouTube's all algorithm driven, and TikTok. So what's Twitter doing differently that's getting you that unregretted user time compared with these other apps? Well, I, I guess it, it matters what content is on, on a system to be recommended in the first place. Okay. So, you know, uh, TikTok has a lot of teen dance videos. Um, <laughs> so clearly it's a popular, you know, yeah. popular topic. Um, uh, Twitter is more of, uh, you know, intellectual debates and, you know, learning things. Humor and, and, and humor. So it's, it's a much more of a variety of a variety show, but, but includes, you know, serious information. Um, and the brand breaking news. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's what it matters that what, if, even if you had identical, if we, there, were, there were identical algorithms between Facebook and, and, tw and Twitter, if Twitter's content is better or yeah. more interesting in, in that way, you still prefer uh, Twitter. And, and as, as you've seen, we've uh, open sourced the algorithm uh, and made, at this point, I think, well over 100 changes uh, based on uh, user feedback. Um, but how will we stay informed if NPR isn't there anymore? <laughs> you know, at any given point, I'm not sure if NPR is there or not. Um, I, I wasn't aware that they were there until they said they were not going to be there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's how it was with Jim Carrey. When I found out Jim Carrey was leaving Twitter, I'm like, I didn't know Jim Carrey was on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and maybe he's back. I don't know. <laughs> not to find out. I mean, we're, we're trying to apply the rules consistently at uh, Twitter so that 
you know, the NPR thing is like, well, um, if we're going to call some media state affiliated, well, there's plenty of uh, media organizations in the, in the U.S. that are, or in the West that are state affiliated. Um, so then we should apply the label equally. Um, and then uh, they got very upset about that um, and said that there will state affiliated implies that the state has editorial authority of an influence over the content and like so you're saying you don't have that <laughs> right <laughs> uh, how self aware are you um you know it was on their website well yeah i mean they 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 well npr literally on their own exactly on their own yeah. website said you know government funding is essential to their operation right and and so we even changed it from uh state affiliated to state funded so that's just literally a statement of fact. Right. I mean, we, we, we could actually just lift the same text from their website and put it at the label. <laughs> and, but they're still, they're, and they're unhappy with that. Yeah, they're unhappy with that. It gives the wrong impression, the true impression. Well, I mean, I think they're going to pull their punches in critiquing the government at NPR. It's just a guess, you know, based on their extreme dependence on government funding. <laughs> I mean, you don't generally bite the hand that feeds you. Let's real quick though, back to the when you came into Twitter. Okay, so the plane is going down, and you and you're at the controls and trying to save it. So you're doing all of these things, but you also did want to restore banned accounts. So, yeah. And so, like the trust and safety team and everybody was were they arguing with you about that, pushing back on that, or yeah. was it primarily advertisers who were giving you the most pressure and saying, if you restore all these accounts, we're pulling our ads? What was happening there? With, pressure you were getting well i mean it was just a totally chaotic situation um because i still got to run tesla and spacex um while trying to figure out anything about how twitter runs um uh you know where you know i exited the top four people in the first hour and then there were a ton of others that uh either got exited or quit yeah. um so i was really just trying to keep the wheels on the bus is the top priority um the tw Twitter uh, code base is very is actually much more complex than you think, and it's not something that just works. You know, it requires a lot of care and feeding. Um, and there, there were many people who predicted that the service would go down and would Twitter was, Twitter's not going to exist after this weekend. There was yeah. a whole World Cup was going to kill it, right? Uh, yeah, it was, was going to yeah. get crushed by the World Cup. Right. A number of predictions that Twitter is about to die uh, were ridiculous. I mean, one can just go. Like almost farcical, frankly. Yeah, it's like, but but it, it was still it, they did ha they did kind of have a point in that it, it wasn't super easy to keep things running. Um, there are, there are so many er esoteric corners of the Twitter software and the system operations that make it hard to, uh, you know, it's hard it's hard to keep running. It's not it's not uh, can't emphasize that enough. It's not a um, you know it's not like some app on the phone that just works. It's a super complicated thing. Financially, it was a very tough situation because Twitter in a normal year would do probably four and a half billion dollars in revenue, four and a half billion in cost. So it's a, it, you know, it's, they'd probably lose a little bit of money because I, you know, that's why I call it a really expensive nonprofit because Twitter is over its lifetime, I believe, uh, negative uh, on, on profitability. Like it's lost more money than it's made. Um, but uh, with, because of the high price of the acquisition, um, which is very foolish, foolishly high on my part. Um, uh, there's twelve and a half billion dollars of debt, and um, debt servicing is a billion and a half. So, uh, and then there's a cyclic decline in advertising uh, that seems to start maybe around May of this year, um, but was pretty significant. That's what you, you saw Facebook and, and Google and others also do some layoffs as a result. Um, so there's a cyclic decline in advertising and then um, a pretty major pause in advertising where advertisers weren't, they just put their, their campaigns on pause. Um, they didn't definitively say no. I mean, a few, in a few cases they did, but most- You mean in response to you taking over and promising yeah. free speech? They're like, oh, we don't want free speech. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, it's more like they are worried about something that would affect their brand, I suppose. Um, although it seems like sometimes they worry about the wrong things. The things they should be worried they, <laughs> they should be worried about some things and they aren't and aren't worried about other things and should be um, but non nonetheless uh, there were uh, a lot of the advertisers put put their advertising on pause to kind of like see see where things go 
Um, and that causes about a, I'd say almost a 50% reduction in revenue immediately. Um, so so we, in, in rough terms, we're um, doing about negative $3 billion a year in cash flow and um, possibly trending to do worse than that, um, possibly four or five. It's hard to tell where the bottom was. Um, and um, a billion dollars in the bank. So hold roughly four months to live. What were the options if you got if you ran out, like you would have to continue to fund it, you'd have to seek funding from outside. Yeah, I mean, it's limited to how, you know, how, how much Tesla stock I can sell, and I can't sell it all, all the time. I mean, the reason I sold stock in December last year was, which I regret at this point, um, was because I wasn't sure how much money Twitter would need. Um, I thought, you know, I might, this, the, you know, in October, it was a $6 billion, $6 billion cash burn, and, and we don't know where revenue is going to bottom out. I had to get the company to financial stability, which we I think more we're close to financial stability, roughly not quite break even, but close to it. And um, I think trending positively. You know, I think I think it's it's at least the planes in level flight. Um, the engine of engineering, software engineering, is is in much better shape. Um, I think we've de 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 deployed more uh, features and capabilities in the last six months than Twitter has done in the last six years. So we're the 20% of the team. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like it was worth it? I mean, do you ever regret it and go, why did I do this thing just to make a stand for free speech or? Um, I think it was necessary. And I, I, I wouldn't say that there's anything that's in retrospect has caused me to, um, I, like I think it was still the right move to acquire Twitter, even at the outrageously high price. Um, yeah, I think it's going to turn out to be important. Well, the price wasn't just financial either. It's like, no, I mean, this is a, I mean, I should say like, you know, I do, there, there were, there are other investors besides me and, yeah. and, and Twitter, um, you know, I'm the majority owner, but I have to, I want to make sure that those who invested, uh, with me do not suffer losses. So I'll, I'll make sure that the ultimate outcome is better than their original investment, but it, so I want to be careful about, you know, it, so it's, 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 but, but, but certainly get, this will be, this is a hard way to get richer. Uh, that's <laughs> for sure. Um, this is the, this is the mega pain way, uh, to make money. Um, th there's, uh, a lot of pressure on whoever's running Twitter, who, you know, to do this or that on the platform, <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, at any given point, someone, you know, someone powerful is unhappy, basically. Um, so anyway, but I, I think it was, it was still important to do. Um, and, and I, because the, the, you know, pretty much all of the social media companies and the search companies were acting in unison and along with the legacy media. So it was just, where do you find you know, actually, where do, where do you find the truth? Um, and, you know, if, if everyone is in lockstep with a lie. Well, you just, uh, did you see Obama's comments recently in a CBS interview? I think it was CBS, where he was talking about how the thing that keeps him up at night is how the media, there's like diversity in the media now, and there didn't used to be. And so now you have different narratives and people basically inhabiting different realities. And that's the thing that's like keeping him up at night is like the big problem that we face right now. He wanted to go back to the glory days. Yeah, there the was glory one days. narrative. And the media was unified. Three different channels all telling you the same. So you disagree. <laughs> You're telling us you disagree. Well, I haven't seen the full video, so it's possible yeah. there may be some contextual elements that mitigate. Community that notes here. will help us with that one. Yeah, yeah. community notes is being pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm watching it closely to make sure, because the as community notes gains credibility, um, the um, the value of gaming it increases. So um, we got to make sure that it is as ungameable as possible. Um, I mean, the uh, you may know this, but the, the I mean, the essential idea behind community notes is um, that a note is only sh shown if it is rated highly by people who historically have different opinions. Mm -hmm. So where 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 do people who would normally disagree agree? Yeah. 
Um, and so even if there's a lot of people from, say, like one political point of view, or it doesn't have to be political, but one point of view, um, and there's only a small amount of number from another political point of view, it, they still have to agree. You can't just brigade the thing with, with one uh, ideology. I, I think the value in community notes goes so far beyond just like fact checking though. It's, it's actually entertaining. It is when entertaining. somebody gets noted, it's like, it's, it's better than getting ratioed. It's, it's, it's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. Um, the humor value of some of the notes is yeah. high. Um, and I think it's, it encourages- When fact checkers get noted, it's like, it's so ironic, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Well, we have so much experience with fact checking because we were getting fact checked by <laughs> Snopes all the time for our jokes, <laughs> you know, true. but that was just one blue haired sure. lady or something getting mad at one of our jokes. And it's so much more powerful when it's, like you said, people that disagree. Yeah. The community coming, coming together to fact check something. And yeah, I mean, the ones that I see are, they're, they're solid. It's like rare to see a wrong one. So, um, and anyone can get, can get community noted, um, including me, obviously. Um, as well as advertisers and um, and presidents of countries and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think once you get noted a few times, you it, it's it, uh, an honesty amplifier. Uh -huh. You know. So well, and they're not used to it. People they're not used to it. Yeah, so. the, uh, people that are on the left or just in their own echo chamber, uh, government leaders, they're not used to that kind of accountability. <laughs> they're not. Um, I think it definitely comes as a surprise when they get a community note for the first, yeah. first time. Have you been noted? How many times have you been noted on? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe three times. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, I've never been community noted. I don't think. Babylon B hasn't been community. Not yet. I was wondering about that. <laughs> if we're, if we're going to get like marked like this was satire, if people believed it was true or something like that. But it hasn't happened. No, we don't make any truth claims, really, right? Yeah. I mean, so I don't know. That yeah, was the weird thing about it. the fact checks. Yeah. People believe it sometimes. They I can't do. tell if it's real. I can't blame them. I, no, no, I, I, so, I, ne I can never blame them. Are, I, I can't, or some of these articles are, I can't tell it. I mean, I can tell that it doesn't have a B logo on it, but, right. I, but, but the actual text of the headline is indistinguishable from a B, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, piece. So it's, it's very, very common at this yeah. point. Um, it's a crazy world we're living yeah, in. Yeah, that's why I don't blame people when, when, when someone says that they, you know, they make fun of people who think that satire is true. I'm like, I don't. You know, it's it, the, yeah. the real the he real headlines are so satirical in nature. They seem like a parody. So, if you believe a B article, it's just yeah, that naturally is going to happen. So you want to see, like, you know, like you see some of these things where where it's like free speech is bad for free speech or so. You know, if, if there was like one headline to that effect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Wait, like, is this sat is this satire or real? It, it, it's satire it, it, or real? It's like right. Yeah. I don't know. You can't um, say. you know, what are, New York Times had like critical thinking is bad for our democracy or something. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of those. There's a lot of those. But you want to see Twitter be a place where truth prevails through debate, right? Where people can yeah. actually go yeah. back and forth rather than you having somebody from the top down deciding this is what's true and this is what everybody needs to believe and in yeah. lockstep unison putting that out there and silencing it and stamping out everybody else. Yes, I, I, we definitely want uh, divergent uh, narratives. Uh, that doesn't mean they have to be, um, you know, uh, that, that people need to get, get violent about it or anything, but I think you want to have a marketplace of ideas where um, people, you know, ha have different viewpoints, they argue the viewpoints, and um, maybe some minds are changed along the way. Um, so, you know, there's this, there's, there's both, it's, an, it's also, is the, is the narrative true and who's choosing the narrative? I think who's choosing the narrative is a bigger deal than, you know, is the article, is, is everything in the article accurate? Because um, there's a lot of things you can write about on Earth. Why write about that thing? Yeah. So, yeah. So, the aspiration here for X slash Twitter is to be, I would call it the least, the least untruthful place on the internet. Um, like, we should acknowledge that there will be things that are untrue on the platform, but we'd like to be the least untrue of, of any place. And people have a right to be wrong anyway. They have a right, well, to, right to be wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think we're succeeding if, uh, if, it's, if, if Twitter is the, the place where you can get the most accurate, the closest to the truth, um, and different perspectives on the truth uh, to, the degree that, to the degree that it's subjective. That's the, that's the goal. Pretty straightforward.
And Elon even thinks that he has the right to share his opinion. Yeah, he has the audacity. Which we found out. The audacity to share yeah. your, your own opinions. I was thinking the opposite. So in this, this is a reference to the interview that you had recently with CNBC. And, and you were asked why you tweet certain things. Why do you why do you share that publicly? Why do you share it widely? Why don't you why don't you keep it in? And the question what, is they're like Soros is Magneto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry, Magneto. Controversial things like that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's unfair to Magneto. It's unfair to Magneto. Exactly. <laughs> I, my mind goes the opposite direction. I'm like, what's in your unsent drafts? I want to oh, know man. what you're not. I want to know what you're holding back. We promise we won't publish this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll turn the cameras off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I probably there, there have been a few cases where I, you know, if if this tweet, if I still want to send this tweet in the morning, yeah, I, I will do so. Um, and there have been a few cases where I should have done so, that would have saved a lot of grief. Um, so th there was some truth to that, like a good friend of mine said, you know, but I'm not going to suggest that I stop tweeting, but but you might want to consider saving it as a draft and seeing if you want to tweet it in the morning. Yeah. That's good advice. That should be a Bible verse. <laughs> yeah. I think like Lincoln did something where he, he, he used to write these like angry letters to people and then he came to the conclusion that it really wasn't doing any good. And so he'd write the angry angry letter and then see if he wanted to mail it the next day. Put it in a drawer. Yeah, stick it in a drawer. Yeah, put it in a drawer. Yeah. I, I believe that was... And, and then he almost never mailed it. Yeah, but you don't write angry tweets. Um, you write angry once tweets. Once in a while, I, you know. Uh, or they, sometimes that my tweets are seen as angry when they're not. Um, so it's difficult to con convey tone, uh, you know, or sarcasm in a tweet. Um, we need that sarcasm font. That's a feature there. Yeah. On Twitter. You seem kind what of... What is a sarcasm font? I don't know. We gotta make, we gotta, <laughs> that's why we gotta make it up. Right? Oh, it's like the SpongeBob. It's the, you know, the capital letters and... The capital yet lettery thing, thing, yeah. Make a sarcasm font on Twitter and we can use it. Okay. You seem taken back by that question, though. Like, no, I'm just trying, like, how would you visually show that something is sarcasm? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, There's no way to do that. You need a disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> he's thinking about it. He's trying, he's trying to he's, Now he's it. calculating. He's, now it's a problem he's got to solve. You can animate the font. Yeah. Uh, in a sarcastic way. Right. Sarcastic animation. <laughs> 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 Can't you tell? <laughs> We've lost him. Now he's just trying to solve this out. problem. <laughs> you, you, you call that uh, animation? <laughs> of course not. It's sarcastic animation. I'm seeing a lot of people who are saying they want to put their video on Twitter now. They can. And Tucker Carlson is going to do his show on Twitter, right? And that wasn't like a deal you worked out. You said it wasn't. There's no deal at all. Um, and I, I, You recommended it to Don Lemon, too. Did he respond? Did he say he's going to do it? I don't know. I actually haven't looked it up. But yeah. I, in, in general, I think it would be cool. So, um, um, I mean, he, 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 you know, we did talk and he just asked me, like, if he does something on Twitter, will we censor it? And I was like, well, no, we, we you know, we believe in, like, the First Amendment and uh, Second Amendment, too. <laughs> well, for protecting the First Amendment. <laughs> um, amen. <laughs> exactly. Amen. Um, so, uh, he just wanted to confirm that, like, you know, we, we wouldn't sort of like suspend his account or or whatever. And I said, well, as long as it's like, you know, as long as uh, it's lawful, um, and uh, then then we will not suspend the account. So that was enough for him to say. This is yeah, just, so what you want to confirm? You want to confirm that that yeah. you know is, is the free speech. He wasn't yeah. concerned about monetization. We want monetization. That's uh, how can we make money? I, th I, think, I, think, I think Tucker's actually in a pretty good financial position. Yeah, I think he's yeah. not like, you know, struggling to pay the mortgage. Um, so, um, no. So, I, I mean, I, I did say like that we've got the subscriptions thing and that we will be uh, also sharing ad revenue with creators. Um, kind of normal stuff, really. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in order for someone to put their video on Twitter as well as, uh, say, YouTube, then they need to at least, you know, make money on that, like equivalent amount of money or maybe more on Twitter, ideally. Yeah, because we, awesome. we make about $27 a month on Facebook video. <laughs> nice. <laughs> YouTube's only a little bit better. Are you serious? Fa we don't make much on Facebook. Facebook's it's very, very little. Yeah, very Facebook's weak. really bad on the monetization. Okay. Yeah. YouTube's a little bit better, but still not. Now, not, not, not. Nowhere near the number of views you're getting. You know, you'll get 
millions and millions of views, especially on these shorts videos, and they, they throw pennies your way. So uh, what is the plan for Twitter video monetization for users? Um, well, we have to have subscriptions, and yeah, I you subscriptions. Know, subscribe to the yeah. video course. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Can you look at that camera and say, subscribe to the Babylon <laughs> Subscribe to the Babylon Bee. There you, go. you won't regret it. Um, so All right, the interview's done. We got, <laughs> got what we needed. <laughs> uh, so we have subscriptions, obviously. Um, we're also uh, going to be surfacing uh, tweets that are subscription tweets where you see the first line. At I, we saw that. Didn't seeing we? it already, yeah. 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 So that, that's going to be really a big deal for a uh, growing subscriber base because people want to kind of see, like, what is this tweet, you know? Right. Um, so we'll, we'll keep like, you know, providing tantalizing content that, that is for subscribers only. Uh, you know, I think it'll, it'll take a moment for users to get used to it, but the, the rate of growth of subscriptions is crazy. Like, um, yeah, I mean, I've never, I, this is the fastest I've seen anything grow. It's like wildfire. So I think it's, it's going to be good. So the subscriptions, uh, and then there's a share of advertising revenue. Um, and, um, we just really need to complete writing the software for, uh, figuring out like what, what ads were associated with what content, um, and then figure out like, you know, some reasonable revenue share. And, uh, from the date that I said we would, you know, uh, compensate creators, uh, we will back data to that and send people checks. So with the advertisers are the advertisers that paused back for the most part are you continuing to see problems with them being concerned about your free speech stance and the new hire that you have coming in as ceo is she going to be addressing some of those issues and trying to work with advertisers to make sure that they feel comfortable on the platform but then also how do you balance that with a commitment to free speech that's kind of a yeah so i mean i think it's reasonable for an advertiser to decide what um what 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 content they appear next to, you know, um, we'll make sure that, that their ad doesn't appear next to something controversial or whatever they, whatever they consider controversial. Um, you know, so, I mean, some things are fairly obvious, like you don't want say, um, a kid's movie showing up next to some racy content of some kind, like, you know, NSFW stuff. Um, so, uh, or, or, <laughs> or, you know, come visit Disneyland next to dead bodies in Ukraine. You know, it's like, uh, that's, that's, it's, it's reasonable to have these adjacency controls. Um, just like, you know, advertisers could pick a particular time of day to, uh, advertise if they're going to advertise, you know, up, up through, I don't know where it is, eight or 9 PM versus like, you know, midnight advertisement, it's going to be different. So, you know, um, we, just, we have, we have those controls in place for the advertisers. Um, and we said like, look, there's freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach necessarily. So it's like if somebody, uh, I mean, we have to be careful what, that that doesn't become dystopian, but, um, people can basically say what they want to say. But if, 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 uh, if a lot of verified accounts flag it as, you know, questionable content, then it, it will not get amplified. So we, we do need to, like, so we need, do need to make, make sure this doesn't have bad effects. This but. new hire though, there's been people you made kind of both sides mad about it, right? You got people on the left yeah. who are mad for their reasons. You have people on the right who are mad for their reasons. You you seem satisfied with that outcome because it means that you know if you've got people on the fringes on both sides upset, then you're doing something right, right? Yeah. But, but when it comes I mean, to, to uh, LGBTQ and QAnon, right, simultaneously upset. Um, <laughs> I was thinking that, that's uh, why I think should, you know <laughs> things go full circle. LGBT, LGBT, LGBTQ and on. <laughs> Could probably get me in trouble. If you like, well, <laughs> probably will. You were saying, <laughs> you're saying you, you want to speak your mind, even if it costs you something. You want to be able to say what you want, even if it costs you something. You said that very emphatically in that, in that interview yeah. you just did. Sure. And so that matters to you a lot. And that in, in so in a context where you've got like uh, a new CEO coming in, who's sure. going to be taking over and you want everybody else to have that same freedom to be able to say what they want even if it costs them something personally in their lives or whatever, to have that freedom. Um, it would seem to me that the number one thing you'd be looking for is someone who's going to come in and be as committed to free speech as you are. Um, that trumps even advertising revenue, in your view, if you're willing to lose money to yeah. be able to personally speak freely. 
then uh, yeah, we've also so, lost money um, advertising money because some advertisers got community noted, right? Um, and we wouldn't take the community note down, right? So we lost forty be, million dollars in advertising because of that, because the big ones pulled out, because of community notes right, right. and refusing to pull community notes. That was a willingness to lose money. Uh, yes, we literally yeah. just lost forty million dollars. Right. <laughs> it's not it's not an approximation. Will things change along those lines? Will there will there be more willingness to compromise to keep the revenue to keep coming in from these big advertisers? Is that a concern of yours? Um no, I think um I think we've actually largely addressed the concerns of the advertisers. Um a lot of them like weren't necessarily against uh, me taking over Twitter, they just weren't sure what it would look like. You know, is it, you know, is it, uh, are there sharks in the water or what, you know? Um, is there going to be rampant disinformation? Um, is it going to be some, like, massive right-wing takeover or what? So they're just, like, uncertain. Um, and I think we're getting to the point here where they're, like, you know, and a lot of them use Twitter every day. And it's, like, it's actually, obviously, it's obviously not filled with hate speech. Like, anyone who uses it knows that. Well, the media keeps trying to say that. They keep publishing these articles. It's yeah. hate speech is on the rise. Hate speech 2, is on the rise. 2,000% Yeah, it's totally false. Yeah. Yeah. Hate speech. <laughs> well, yeah, it's completely false. The, the view counts are um, down by a third, maybe a half. Uh, and that's despite usage of the you know, all-time record usage of Twitter. And how do they define hate speech is a, is a big question mark. I think. Well, it turned out one of the ways that it, one of the hate speech terms was literally George Soros. His name. <laughs> yes, just saying it. We count it as a hate speech thing. So I thought, well, you That's know, wild. maybe the definition is a little broad. Yeah. So um, calling him Magneto <laughs> is considered hate I speech. I mean, you know, it's like... It's not love It's speech. a comic book, you know. It's like, let's <laughs> relax, you know. It's not the end of the world here. Does that make you Professor X, or... <laughs> Who's Professor X in this? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well... Do you know a lot of smart people? I, I think we'll be fine. Like, I think the advertisers at this point are um, comfortable with the fact that Twitter is uh, going to be you know, fair and, and, and not sort of a haven of hate type of thing. Um, and they've, they've used it enough to, for, for themselves at this point to, like, they know that from their usage, it's, it's actually fine. Um, we've vastly reduced the amount of spam and scam stuff that happens on, on Twitter. Um, it's quite rare at this point to see uh, spammers, whereas my feed used to be filled with them before. I think we, we can, we're not going to make all advertisers happy, but I think we'll make most of them uh, happy. And uh, um, there'd be enough that are happy that uh, to support the, you know, this platform. Uh, but it would, we're, we're not going to uh, compromise on free speech. Well, and it's, you see Twitter as more than social media. You know, you've got X and the everything and, and yeah, what, there's a, what is the future vision for them? You know, some of that will be fulfillment of the vision I had for X.com 24 years ago, um, which was, you know, to be an all-encompassing financial services uh, provider. Um, and, um, you know, that's actually an important part of freedom and freedom as well. If, uh, if those doing you know, the money exchange or running the money system uh, can stop people who disagree with them politically, that's a, a huge problem. I mean, so that happened in Canada with the trucker strike, uh -huh. where people were being, like, basically financially ostracized from society for, for just protect, you know, being a peaceful strike. Um, and, uh, you know, I saw some, th some strange things with, with, with PayPal where they were, like... Um, Suspending accounts that they for, for what appeared to be political reasons. I don't know if you saw any of that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so like you know, if, if it, like so that's your freedom of information. That's it. But but money is a form of information. So I think it's important that uh, we have have a within the, within the bounds of the law that we enable freedom of um, flow of money, which is. Of information, and you see that living on Twitter eventually. It's part well, it's part of X. X. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think we, we need to broaden the branding. Yeah, uh, like Twitter makes it made sense as a name. Um, you know, if people are sending, you know, texts, basically group texts at 140 characters a piece, 
uh, between each other. That's that's kind of a, a short thing, a tweet, you know, not a long thing. <laughs> um, but at the point at which you've got not just text, but pictures, video, uh, live interaction, um, you know, uh, a full array of financial services, um, a full array of communications, uh, encrypted communications, voice, video, everything. Twitter, I think, is the wrong branding for that. It, it, it always, it, I believe in descriptive branding. So, uh, whereas X is, is kind of, can, X can mean anything. So X mark, you know, X marks the spot. X is where the treasure is. X, X, X is where the coin is. <laughs> <laughs> We're Christians. We're Christians, so we wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. um, X rated. <laughs> But I think, you know, in, in general, the goal here is like, look, uh, let's just make sure we take the, the, the actions that strengthen the pillars of democracy and uh, further civilization. Um, you know, we want to have a future we can look forward to, that we're excited, that we're, we're excited about the future, not, not one where we're sad about it. So, and the civilization is more fragile than people realize. If you study the rise and fall of civilizations in history, you know, when they're at the top, they never think they're going to fall. But they always do, eventually. Yeah. Every, every civilization has a lifespan. About how many years do you think we got left? Well, I'm seeing a lot of late stage civilization vibes these days. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. Um, um, I don't know, man. There's so many wild cards. <laughs> I mean, the short term we've got, um, we have the financial crisis, probably some economic thing, but whatever, those things happen from time to time. Um, but we've got uh, you know, some geolog geopolitical wild, wild cards with uh, Ukraine and uh, Taiwan, and, uh, and then AI, which is... You know, called the, the it's called the singularity for a reason. Like, because you don't know what's going to happen. It's like a black hole. You go in the black hole. What happens? Don't know. We're on the we're on the singularity AI singularity event horizon, circling the black hole. Well, and does AI concern you more than those other things like geopolitical nuclear war or whatever? And where does that fall on the scale for you? I know you've, you've said some cautionary things about it, but I don't know if you're like as much of a doomer as some people are about AI. I mean, the good news about Russian roulette is five of the barrels are loaded. <laughs> That's encouraging. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the bright side. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like a lot of times people that are in tech are pushing these things forward without any guardrails or consideration, you know, for what could go wrong, despite all the cautionary tales. <laughs> what is like, like that's what sci-fi is all about? You know, that's you why think there should be regulation right? and stuff like that, right? But what does that look like? How do you regulate AI, for example? Well, I, th I think you, you start off with uh, an insight committee um, that has, uh, you know, in, people that are independent from the leading players, as well as maybe some representatives re representatives from the leading players. And uh, that's an insight committee. The goal is simply to learn things. Um, and then consult with industry and propose rules. Um, that's basically how it's worked for food and drug or for aircraft or cars. You know. So is that when, there, when there is something that is a danger to the public, uh, there's some regulatory body to kind of like a referee, make sure the companies don't cut corners and stuff. When it comes to just coming back to speech real quick and Twitter, <clears throat> I've often wondered, in our case with you, you know, we had a situation where this benevolent billionaire comes in and decides, I'm going to make sure free speech exists for people because there's no place where they can speak freely right now. So I'm going yeah. to buy Twitter and restore free speech on this platform. Great. We're glad that you did that. Thank you. But should we have to rely on benevolent billionaires to solve these problems for us, or should there be legal changes should there be like right now the law currently protects us from 
government censorship, obviously, right? Yeah. We all, the First Amendment does that. But it doesn't protect us from private companies that want to muzzle our speech. Sure. So should there be legal changes that prevent viewpoint discrimination? And do you, do you support laws like that? Um, are you aware of some of the, the, the legal, uh, the current bills, like in different states that are, that are being pushed along those lines? There are various bills. I mean, we have to be careful that, that the, the, the bill that's intended to good, do good does not pave the road to hell. So um, I, I think so, something that I think would be very powerful is to say that, that all social media companies have to open source their algorithms um, so that if so at least it's known what they're suppressing and they can't secretly suppress things. Right. There's a massive amount of secret suppression going on at Facebook, um, Google, Instagram, massive. It's just nonstop secret suppression. And there was at Twitter. And yeah, absolutely. But not anymore, right? Right. And people call it shadow banning. Yeah. Correctly. It's like there's nothing you can't there's nothing it says that you're banned or but you're you're you you are effectively, you know, s s stuck in the basement. <laughs> Well, that would be no, a legal change. Like, that would be yeah, a law that requires be... open source, yeah. that if you're going to censor, you better do it transparently. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that people, it, it really doesn't take much to sort of censor something. So there's a lot of censorship that goes on at Google that people don't realize because all that needs to happen is just move, just move that link to page five. Right. You know, I mean, the thing about, the little joke about Google is like, what's the best place to hide a dead body? Well, the, the second page of Google search results. <laughs> right. And nobody ever looks there. So you, you, if you just nudge something um, to page, even page two, it's going to drop the visibility by 100. But if you apply that to the principle of freedom of speech, but not of reach, isn't that the same thing? Is there a difference? Potentially, yeah. That's why it's That's where you're saying there's, you got to be careful really with how you handle that. that. Yeah. Well, one of the craziest things you did when you took over Twitter was start releasing the Twitter files, which... Yeah. Like, who takes over a company and then says, look how horrible all this stuff <laughs> was going on. We need to have, like, truth and re reconciliation here, yeah. you know. So if we're not going to expose the, the things that were done wrong, why should people believe us in the future? So, the you know, that's why, like, we're trying to be as transparent as possible. So it's like, don't take my word for it. Literally look at the algorithm. You should be able to recreate the results that you see uh, on Twitter with, the uh, you know, using that algorithm. Um, so, and we're trying to... <laughs> Trying to make sure that that everything is uh, brought to light, not just so there's no no hidden layers or anything. We just discovered a, you know, uh, last week a hit like some hidden layer of of uh, censorship that was written in 2012. Uh, and like censorship is maybe the wrong word. It would it would basically uh, suppress. It had like a list of words, and any of those words, some of them were like uh, like suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you put suck. <laughs> just S U C K. Actually, even it, with other words, it it, um, it gets massively deamplified, and that was literally code from like 2012. And we found about we found this like relic um, of code uh, last week. And it was being applied to like all tweets. Yeah, all tweets. Wow. Um, so there's uh, like the the guy that's bought a, a flight on Starship in Japan is. Um, uh, you, uh, his name is his Twitter handle is you suck 2020 right. <laughs> and he, he was like listen there's something wrong with my account you know <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm shadow banned <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> and I and sure enough it's because uh, his Twitter handle had suck in it <laughs> so um, you know it turned out there's, there was about a, a thousand words from some ancient list that was were tweets were being suppressed. Um, and then we just found a list of URLs that are being suppressed. Um, you know, some of them are like, no, obviously renowned scammer URLs, but, but some of them aren't. It's like babylonb.com was on the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there's just a, like, it's like an archeological dig, frankly, you know. You talk a lot about wokeness and the woke mind virus and all that was, is, do you feel like that's what was driving those kinds of decisions here? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're it's like, you know, around here it's not about whether you had the you know, had some of the woke Kool Aid. It, you're swimming in the woke Kool Aid. It's like you know, it's like a fish doesn't see the water; it's swimming in it. Yeah. Right. It it, it just seems normal. Like if you're in the cult, it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the, the thing is like, there's actually so much material, like there's a, God knows how many lines of Slack, for example. Right. Yeah. Um, this company ran on, ran on Slack. So it was like one massive group text situation. Um, so it's a lot of material. Um, not that many emails, emails mostly were for people coming from outside, you know, outside communications. And then there was that weird government portal that destroyed everything after two weeks, which doesn't sound legal. Um, but yeah, I thought it was amazing how you were from day one, basically handling customer service. Yeah. You were like personally looking at reports from people trying to dig into things. Yeah. And that was like no, no, round the clock for you for a little while. <laughs> I mean, the, the, yeah, the sheer layers, the, 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 like, this is a term, a term of of bullshit, basically. Um, so many layers. Um, I mean, it, it, really, the, the, there needs to be a ground up rewrite. Um, you know, otherwise, we're, we're like going through like this ghost mansion, you know, trying to get the ghosts out one at a time. <laughs> um, still finding ghosts as recently as last week um so uh but but we, we are actually slimming down the code base we are rewriting a lot of it um we we the the, the main sort of home timeline mixer was uh 700 hundred thousand lines of code now it's seventy thousand. so it's down by a factor of 10 um and does a better job and is faster um, so, and that's the side of the business you're going to stay involved in and personally invested in is the tech side. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm setting the overall ground rules, um, and uh, like the constitution type of thing, uh -huh. which is you know, very clearly uh, free speech, um, and um, and and that will that is that is not a revenue optimizing strategy. So, um, but we don't need to make a ton of money. We just need to not go bankrupt. So. Um, that's part of the reason for having some amount of subscription revenue. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, we, you know, we respect the advertisers, but we don't want to be too dependent on them. Not go bankrupt. That's the business. That's the end goal. <laughs> <laughs> not go bankrupt, you know, hopefully make at least some reasonable return for investors. Um, but it's not like, you know, it's, it's, it's not like uh, just some sort of mercantile optimization. So, Do you think it's possible to run a free speech platform that is profitable? We're going to find out. So, I think so. I mean, I, like, I'm not sure. Like, you can definitely sell your soul to the devil here and and increase revenue. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So that you know that's and I think it it becomes tough if you're especially for a publicly traded company. Um, you can be sued for not you know taking the actions that maximize profitability. So. Um, you know, you know, Jack was right that it was impossible to reform as a public company because you, you just get excoriated in the market and have a zillion lawsuits. Um, anyway, so it's like, I, I'm hopeful the platform can be, like I said, the, the least untrue, but closest to, closest to, closest to true and, uh, complete, you know, the, the <laughs> it's going to be, you know, hopefully the whole truth. Probably not nothing but the truth, because there'll be some things that aren't true. Uh, but but the whole but 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 a diversity a diversity of, ex of perspectives, so and a diversity of narratives, so people, you know, can decide what they want to focus on and not be forced by things. Also, recommend that Twitter Twitter lists are actually pretty great. Yeah. You know so, and we're we're, we're we've now um, it made it easy to find like. Uh, lists created by experts on, on various subjects. Um, so that's another way to stay, you know, stay informed on, on any subject, whether it's sports or politics or ga video games or whatever. How worried are you about Mastodon and Tribal? <laughs> um, well, once I tried using them, I was like, it's not going to be, it's not a threat. That was my conclusion. Most importantly, you brought up video games. Have you played the new Zelda game yet? Is it is it great? It is. You know, I've I've never played a Zelda game. Before. You haven't? Wow, surprising. Um, I I only 
with Square Enix, I've only I, I played just PC games. Um, is Zelda on PC? Nintendo only. Right? Not legally. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Can't condone that, um, but you know. Halo was the only game that I ever played on a console. Okay. What are you playing right now? I'm actually looking for something good to play. Um, so, I finished Dead Space, which is the Dead Space remake is really good. Is it? Yeah. I heard it was woke. Is it woke? The Dead Space remake, I would not say. Not, not woke. Okay. No. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally trying to make things as scary as possible. It's like, as it's maximizing fear yeah it's gruesome i played the original i i haven't played the remake so no it's uh it's it's gruesome yeah <laughs> i mean it's it's, it's uh it's it's like it, it's night really the stuff of nightmares um uh yet i i pr prefer doing that than email <laughs> <laughs> or slack <laughs> slack. Are you in I, the I Slack channels? Do you go in there? I don't, I don't use Slack because there's just the, the, it's too much. It's overwhelming. Too much. Yeah, exactly. It's like being in a a million group chats. Dead space, not as terrifying as a group chat. I like it. Yeah, That's better cool. than email. Yeah, <laughs> better than email. <laughs> I'll try, I, yeah, the Elden, Elden Ring was really good. Yeah. Did you play Elden Ring? Uh, yeah. He, he beat it. I haven't. Uh, I haven't beaten it yet. Yeah, I got a horse, but you know, I didn't get very. <laughs> oh, that's a long way to go, Pat. After that. the horse, <laughs> say the least. You, ever, you played first person. You played Halo. So did you yeah. ever play multiplayer? or Did you just do the campaign? Well, there's there's the recent one, which is, um, I, I finished. I you know to brag a little. I did. I completed the campaign on Legendary. Oh, wow. All right. Um, which is hard. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> the last battle was really difficult. <laughs> but you don't go online and play against random people on the on the internet, just multiplayer like team deathmatch. Um, no. Well, I, I did I did that for a split second with with a friend. Um, it's it's tough. So I actually He's trying to ask if you'll be his friend on Xbox. I'm just wondering if every now and then I'm <laughs> maybe playing against you under some. <laughs> I used to I used to play a lot of video games, a lot a lot of competitive video games. So way back in the day, um, I um, it's quite I was quite competitive at Quake, um, and um, my sort of team of four, I was the second best guy on the team. Um, uh, we came second in the first I would I think was the first paid uh, e games tournament in the U S. That's where you got your money. Your start. Yeah, I think I think we got like three thousand dollars or something. We need community it notes. Was it wasn't the Emerald Mines. It was a Quake yeah. tournament. We need community notes yeah. to fact check this this claim. Um, get get on it, community. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we, came, we we were actually we almost won, but the the, the guy who's the best on the team, uh, Brandon Spikes, he um, his his computer crashed, so uh, we came second instead. Uh, we still got you know, money and stuff. Anyway, I've made money playing video games. That's amazing. Yeah. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 yeah. Um, these days, I kind of like a campaign with a, with a good story. Um, it's, it's hard to match reflexes with, like, you know, 16-year-olds. Yeah. There's got to be some strategy element to it. They're always saying mean things about your mom and stuff on there. It's kind of um, well, harsh. Yeah. I have some friends who play uh, League of Legends. Oh yeah, they're they're pretty mean in those communities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are yeah. toxic. They call it toxic community. Yeah, uh, league is intense. Yeah, <laughs> Le league is a lifestyle. Yeah, one of the lifestyle games. Yeah, I think, my, I think my son Griffin put more time into league than he does did into his college applications. I mean, if he, if if he was awake at like five in the morning, he that's like he's playing league. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of looking for. You know, a game sort of take your mind off things for half an hour or whatever. Well, I'll try to come up with some recommendations for you. The new Jedi game. I'm going to I'm gonna get that soon. Can't recommend it yet because I haven't played it. Well, what, what There's do you a fun do? game for phones <clears throat> called Vampire Survivors. Oh, huh. I'll check that out. Yeah, that's good. My, my recommendation. Well, what, what do you do in... What, what do you like to watch in terms of comedy and entertainment? I know you, you share a lot of memes and you know, obviously, comment on some Babylon B articles and stuff like that. You commented, you tweeted one time about how wokeness is destroying 
comedy and how or it, it was yeah. how, it was how woke, you can't write com, comedy from a leftist place of wokeness because there's no truth claim or the truth claim is well, wrong. I mean, I'm in, butchering it, but I you mean, I, you know, um, hardly need to tell you guys, but um, the you know the essence of a lot of comedy is a revealed truth, mm -hmm. um, like a hidden truth that people understand intuitively or explicitly, um, and uh, there's that there's that sort of moment of revealed you know, kernel of, tru of, of, of often un unacknowledged truth. And, and in that unacknowledged truth is the humor. Um, so um, if you're, you know, premised on a lie, you, you can, can no longer be funny because there's no revealed truth. Um, and this is, um, you know, why a lot, you know, a lot of people on the left have no sense of humor. They, they're not funny. Um, and if, if, there, if there are so many no-fly zones, you know, um that you have to you, you have to avoid all the time then how do you what 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 is there what, what like there's nothing left to make to have fun about you know yeah so um well rogan was saying like wokeness is funny like a lot of the woke ideas are so outrageous they are funny and so when you're not allowed to make fun of the funniest thing right that's why sites like ours do well is because we are willing to do that. There's a lot of sure. people who are just holding back on the things that are right for comedy. Well, Have you been to the Mothership Club yet in Austin where he's been? Uh, uh, no. No? I'd love to go there. And um, he's like, he's trying to make it so that it's, you know, comedians can come there, cancel free environment, make the jokes you're not supposed to make. I mean, if you see any comedies from times past, I mean, it, they're, they're so sort of, Borton at this point, it's insane. Um, you know, they're making fun of all sorts of things that would be totally unacceptable these days. Um, that's why I tweeted once, like, just you know, legalize comedy. You know, yeah. Um, if if you keep, you know, saying that you can't make fun of things, um, or something's always punching down, you know, like, well, there's not, not going to be anything left to make humor. I don't think we want a humorless uh, future. <laughs> um, it's the same, I mean, it's the same thing that you have with speech, where it's like, you know, if, if only the, the popular narrative is being promoted and it's never being challenged, then that's a problem. And it's a problem for, it's a problem for comedy, too. Yeah. So you, you, you can't be funny just propping up the popular narrative and trying to get people to clap for you. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's applause. It's not laughter. Yes, true. Clapter, somebody called it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny seeing some of the snippets from the uh, White House Correspondents Club what, d dinner, you know, um, where Biden was getting a lot of claps, but it was like, is this your cheering squad or what? Right, right. You know? <laughs> a lot of applause. <laughs> a lot of applause. Um, you know, yeah. Wh whoever stopped clapping last is out of the out of the <laughs> You just want someone normal. To be president, you said recently, someone normal, a normal human being. I mean, I think so. Now, now the thing is that it, it just it just it just contrary to uh, my prediction of the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. Yeah. Um, you may have heard me say that, like this awkward Much razor, times, yeah. The, yeah. the the simplest ex explanation is most likely. My friend Jonah has this. Uh, you know, his theory is the most ironic explanation is most likely, and then my variant is. Uh, the most entertaining outcome is the most likely, as viewed from a third party who's not in the show. So you you, you could be watching a World War One movie where people are getting blown to bits, and you're just having a soda and popcorn. You know, it's fine. Um, but it's rough for the people getting blown up by cannon shells. Right. Um, we're we're in there getting blown up by cannon shells, and what so whatever the so or or a very good thing happening. Um, but uh, my theory is that the more often than not, the uh, most entertaining outcome, as as though we were an alien soap opera, is the is, is the most likely. So if you, if you can say, what is the most entertaining outcome for the election next year? That's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> is that because God is a jokester and is messing with <laughs> us, or what? Or because we're in a simulation? Or is it because of simulation? Yeah. I mean, ratings, man. <laughs> Just for the ratings. God's doing it for the ratings. Well. I'm saying that that's often the case. Um, the most entertaining outcome, as viewed by a, th a third party, 
like in it, like it's just alien, alien self armor is 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 hot. The whole Twitter thing has been very very entertaining from the outside. Yeah. On the inside, it's been hell. Or I mean, it has it been, been some fun? Uh, hellish moments? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Some definitely been some hellish moment moments. Um, yeah, so it's been I say it's a rough it's been a rough six months, but tra- at, at this point, trending positively. It wasn't easy. So uh, a lot of open heart surgery. Um, but things seem to be, you know, knock on wood, headed in a good direction. And your chief twit still right now, but you hand that off when? Uh, we're still figuring that out. Um, cause, uh, Linda's got to exit her obligations at NBC. So, um, a month or so, I suppose. Oh. Um, but I, you know, I'll still be responsible for software development and the, the core principles the you know the constitution of the company being um, free speech is uh, Linda understands that she supports that. Good. Yeah. So she signed something like it's in writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of things that that need to get done for a company are, you know, there's a lot of chores. It's not uh, just things that need to be done and legal, HR, finance. You know. Um, yeah, solving interpersonal arguments that people have. You know, there's a lot of sort of just general management stuff that takes can takes a lot of time. So I'm hopeful Linda can uh, handle that, and um, I will manage the software team. Well, do you have any questions for us? Um, <laughs> no, just uh, you know, cheers, I suppose. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, man. Cheers. Thank you for taking the time. This is awesome. Well, you're welcome here. Yeah. It's pretty crazy to go from Twitter jail to sitting down at Twitter HQ. The barbarians have burst through the gate and are having a drink <laughs> <laughs> in the in the enemy palace. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking from the skulls of our... <laughs> well, what is well. best in life? What is best in life, exactly. Conan the Barbarian. Underrated. <laughs> I just feel like it feels like victory. Yeah, it does. Yeah. To us anyway. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. I feel great. <laughs> Didn't cost us much. Didn't cost us 40. Well, we did give him an IOU. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, we're on the hook for that IOU. You didn't sign it, did you? <laughs>